of all of this chaos, you have billionaire globalist George Soros and his ilk throwing their weight around and his experiences collapsing five economies and governments. He's now trying, and these are not my words, these are his, he is now trying to topple the biggest one of all, America. Watch. I became concerned with the problems of globalization, where you have global markets, but you have politics based on the sovereignty of states. So how do you deal with that, that issue? And, uh, and then I came to the realization that open society is endangered by, by our current leadership in, in, in this country. And that is when I refocused my attention on the United States. Now, we exposed this week that he has a pattern that he has followed for the last five collapses. The first step is to form a shadow government. We have that. I mean, you can call it the czars or whatever you want, but there is a shadow government going on. Step two, control the airwaves. They haven't quite mastered that one yet, but they're close. Step three, destabilize the state, cause an economic crisis, or take advantage of an existing one. I believe that both of these are happening. Step four, provoke an election crisis. You don't think that's coming? Five, stage massive demonstrations, cry voter fraud, and demand to change election results. We've already seen this tried in 2000. You don't think these things can happen? This is the way George Soros has collapsed countries before. Everything, the conditions are all right. He's busy working on these steps at Davos. He's a globalist who think that people like him should be in control, and he's not alone. This week, he likened himself to, and I kid you not, an angel. Watch, this is this week. So uh, I'm right now on the sort of on the side of the angels. Not an easy play role to play. So, I, I'm now in a sort of poacher turned game game player trying to keep the system together. Oh, not an easy role to play. One of an angel. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Obama said today at the National Prayer Breakfast that he's doing everything he's doing in office because of God. I think to myself. If I'm willing to give something up as somebody who's been extraordinarily blessed and give up some of the tax breaks that I enjoy, I actually think that's going to make economic sense. But for me as a Christian, it also coincides with Jesus' teaching that for unto whom much is given, much shall be required. This is amazing to me. Yes, it is required, but it's not required that you give it to the government. It's required that you personally do it. You don't give up. Jesus wasn't talking about tax breaks, Mr. President. For the love of Pete, this drives me out of my mind. Jesus is not, I mean, you would not be a good steward. Let me ask you this. God gives you an awful lot. He's given you much. Much is required. Yes, also a brain. A brain is required to think, gee, I'm going to give it to the government, which will only give about 20 cents on every dollar to the people in need. Or I can use my brain as a good steward and give it to some place where 100 cents on every dollar or 80 cents, 50 cents on every dollar. It's being a good steward, Mr. President. I can't find that stuff in the Bible that he talks about unless you go to the book of Mark's. This mentality is the hallmark of every progressive policy. Obama's new mortgage plan. Here's proof of how terrible and dangerous the media really is. CBS is reporting now the new Obama plan is, is effective, quote, because the money saved could spur the economy in other ways. And the plan shouldn't cost the government anything. Really, CBS? The President of the United States is forcing private corporations to allow homeowners an exit out of a mutually agreed upon contract that would cause the company to lose money. But the homeowner doesn't lose anything. CBS views this as a no-brainer, and I believe CBS is right, because everyone at CBS has no brain, and that's why it makes sense. Gee, if the president could just tell all the companies to give their customers their money back or just give their products away for free, think about how much money would be floating around the economy. Did CBS even ask the question, what happens when, you base, when your whole country is based on contracts 
And when your contract doesn't mean anything anymore because the government says, ah, we're not going to pay attention to those contracts. We're already living in a country where our word was our bond. A man's handshake was everything. Now that means nothing. And look where it's gotten us. Now you take contracts out, make them worthless. It may not cost the government anything, but what will the cost be to man's freedom? You're seeing it at the UN. The UN. They've just urgently decided yesterday that it's time to retool the world economy, one world government. Among their proposals, a stronger interface between science and policy. What does that mean? Quote, we must define what scientists refer to as planetary boundaries beyond which human activity could wreck the planet. So in other words, we have to have scientists, people who know more than you, to come up with these boundaries for people. Planetary. Planetary boundaries equals less freedom. Somebody else is going to make a decision someplace in the world. A faceless scientist along with a faceless non-voted into office politician. We are headed to a very dark and evil place, America. So what is the answer? Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Whether people want to believe it or not, we are fighting a spiritual war now. This is way beyond politics. It's evil.